let's build a fishing trawler in Raft. Hi friends, and welcome back to Raft. It's been a little while since we've done a Raft building tutorial, but I've been inspired recently to do a bit of creative building. Many of you requested an aesthetic Raft design that has a full range of collection nets, and I couldn't think of a better way to incorporate this wide and flat shape than with some trawl nets. So you can clean up the ocean thoroughly and look good doing it. As always, materials are listed in the description, so you can know what you'll need to gather to build this ship. This design is meant for mid to late game play, and you can build up the shape over time and swap out components as you choose. Of course, it is story compatible and fitted with all of the things you need to live a comfortable and happy life out on the seas. So with that out of the way, let's build a perfect survival raft, the fishing trawler. Before we jump into this tutorial, I want to quickly thank today's sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University. As many of you know, I'm currently in graduate school pursuing my passion for marine biology, and if you're interested in game development, you could do the same by taking a course through SNHU. Raft itself started as a university project for the three original Red Beat devs, and became one of the most popular survival crafting games on the market. Without them taking a game development class, we wouldn't be here building fun boats in our favorite ocean floating simulator. In SNHU's online program, you'd learn about game AI, coding languages, physics, and plenty of other skills you'd need to make a game of your own. I cannot advocate enough for continuing to pursue your education and develop skills you are interested in, and getting started with SNHU is a great way to get your foot in the door. If you want to know more, check out snhu.edu slash aladev, or visit the link in the description. It's completely free to request more information and open the door to a new life skill. We're going to start off with a 12 by 6 rectangle with rounded corners. On the front end, you'll need to add two rows of triangles and squares until they come to a point. Friendly reminder that you can use the Z key to mirror your wood direction so you don't end up with those ugly corners. On the back side, add two squares in the middle. These are all of the pieces that will need to be fortified to protect your raft. Then we're going to ring around the back to that middle with normal roof pieces. Connect the roof to the floor with triangles and half walls. Off the back of that, we need a raised area that goes two squares out. So connect the sides with triangles and floor squares using horizontal pillars as needed to replace the second layer. For the front, build up two layers of roof pieces on either side of the slope, and then we're going to ring the entire outside with two layers of half walls, leaving space for a door at the center, which is roughly six squares in from the back if you lost track. Then go ahead and fill in the entire ceiling using your preferred method of either horizontal pillars or the floating floors tech. I'm using the floating floors to reduce material costs, which you can do by building up two cheap wood windows and then placing triangles all the way around your windows to make a full floor, removing the windows to leave a floating platform at no extra cost. After that, we're going to start on the main deck. One square in from that little divot we made on the back of the boat, cut a diagonal hole in your roof so that a ladder can be placed facing the front of the ship. On the very front, add another layer of roofs around the sloped tip. Connect that with an upside down triangle and then six normal half walls. After that, you need five windows and you can connect all the way around the back with normal half walls. Do this on both sides of the boat. Three squares in from the back wall on the top deck, add in two normal height walls. On either side, going down the long end of the ship, add one normal wall, one door, and one half wall. Box in the front with two more half walls and then bring out the front with two more floors. Ring those extended floors with tall normal windows. Going back towards the back of the ship, you'll need one normal wall and one half wall on top of the door. Then you'll need a 2x2 two two square of floors staggered off the back of our cabin, and then you can finish out the raised section with another two half walls on top of those floors and cap off the rest of the cabin. Those are all of the structural elements, so let's add in the structural decoration. On the cabin, ring the doorway with pillars, then ring that back platform with horizontal ones. To get up higher, add a ladder off of the back side of the cabin connecting to that back platform. We can line that platform with fences and then ring the raised platform with yet more horizontal pillars. On the front of the cabin, line just the bottom of the floating part with yet more horizontal pillars. Now let's set up the net rig. Where the back platform meets the main cabin, build two cheap wood pillars vertically up. In the middle of those two pillars, you'll need to go out two and a half pillars to the side. Mirror the structure on both sides of the cabin. In the very front of the boat, where the first two triangles end, build a three tall pillar straight up with a full cheap pillar going out of the top back towards the main bulk of the ship. This may require some scaffolding, which you can remove after placing the rigging later. Starting on the first half wall from the front, add four wooden fences and then connect those down to the walls with detail planks. To give us that distinct fishing boat look, we're also going to do some extra external decorations on the sides of the ship. On the outside of the uppermost half wall, you'll need a full ring of detail planks all the way around the ship. The half wall below that, place horizontal pillars all the way up until they meet the last half wall on that layer. 
On the bottom layer, add horizontal pillars from the back until you meet the doorway. Then I like to use some extra detail planks on the side to create a bit of a swoop shape to connect around the front, which will look better once we add in some paint later. This mimics that multicolored striped look that a lot of trawl boats use and will lend you that extra bit of creative freedom. Feel free to also add in little detail plank tires or life rings on the sides as you see fit. With the main structure done, let's make this boat functional. On either side of the ship, starting from the tile in front of the door, you'll add a little scaffolding foundation which will allow us to place our collection nets. They go in a staggered 3-4-4 pattern, curving towards the back of the ship as if they are getting dragged out by the weight of the water in the net. This curve shape is also more beneficial to catch stuff if you end up traveling diagonally or horizontally, so it's multi-purpose. Don't remove those scaffolds quite yet though, as we'll need them for the rigging. Now of course, we want to connect our collection nets through the middle, but place your anchor first so that the hole is three squares in on the right side when facing the back of your raft. This may require some floors to be removed and replaced, or you can use the carpet glitch, or just wait until the waves line up. Then you can connect the middle line through with collection nets. I'm using advanced nets for the aesthetic, but the materials listed use cheap nets because frankly they are a lot more practical. In the back of the ship on the right side, we're going to set up the electric water purifier. I prefer to use the carpet glitch to avoid destroying the foundation, thus maintaining my outside profile, but whichever method you prefer is up to you. Then put your water pipes out the front of the purifier, up one level, and place a quick scaffold right over the back of that divot. Bring the water pipes all the way to the back wall, where you'll replace that wall on the back edge with a window. Don't worry, everything is structurally sound, so nothing will collapse. To the left of that pipe, place whatever collection of crop plots you'd like. I used a few medium advanced plots and a few cheap simple ones, it's just a matter of your preference. The reason we're putting them here is for the sprinkler, which we'll connect later. One square in diagonally from either corner, destroy three foundations to make way for your engines, which you'll place so that the engine house is against the wall. Make sure to set the directions to forward and your engine controls will do the rest. If you're early game and don't want to worry about this, you can always use a window on the outside to create a viewing platform as well, or temporarily have the engines on the inside, but we're setting up for the automatic biofuel. Speaking of biofuel, place your advanced refiner into that back divot so that the spigot faces the outside of the boat. On the outside, you'll place some scaffolding foundations connecting all the way from either door around the back side of the ship, tapering in at the very back so that there's a foundation just under the close edge of that raised platform on the bottom. On those scaffolds, place down all of your biofuel pipes. When you're ready to use your engines in the original layout, these pipes will automatically connect through the walls so your interior isn't cluttered by pipes everywhere. If you like, you can also add in a beehive with stacked simple plots on the wall above it for some extra honey on the back left side. On either side of the front of the engines, you could add recyclers or a wardrobe if you choose. When facing the front of the ship, be one square on the right and then place two walls going towards the left. Add a door going diagonally and then two walls going towards the front. Inside the little room you just created, block off the back with a wall on either side and a door in the middle. Continuing into the front of the ship, add one more wall going towards the left of the ship, and then complete a wall going all the way to the front with a door one square in from the sectioning wall. Finally, you can add a door and one more wall to finish blocking off the living area. Outside that living area, you can create your ideal workspace. I've used an advanced smelter with a storage wall on the other side using my favorite method of hanging large tables off the wall and then stacking three layers of chests. I also decorated it a little bit with some flags, a trash can in the corner, and a plant by the door. On the outside of the right side, I set up a little honey farm with four simple plots hanging from the wall, two beehives, and a cute little plant for decoration. This first room I turned into a kitchen with all of the essentials. The cooking pot fits nicely between the doors with some chests under each side of the table for some food storage. The juicer can go against the other short wall closer to the door with enough corner space left over to place an advanced grill. I also added in a little breakfast nook just because it looks nice and filled the corner with yet more plants. Feel free to decorate these spaces as you like, but these are functional and relatively aesthetic spaces. The large room at the very front makes for a cozy bedroom with a research table on the left side with some books over the top, a hammock nested in the bow and little carpets for some color, and a cozy seating area in the remaining corner. Then the last little room makes an excellent tiny bathroom, complete with everyone's favorite bathtub. On the main deck, we'll add an animal area on the very back of the ship with some grass plots. Now because our raft width is an even number and the sprinkler water is a 3x3 three three square, the sprinkler won't be symmetrical, so you can either add another one or just let it exist with a few unwatered grass squares. I used two rows of four squares and then one row of two just to connect it to the cabin. You can then ring this area with fences of your choice and block off the area behind a ladder with some signs. On the very back of the ship, add some temporary scaffolding on either side of that sprinkler down to the window with the pipe. Then you can connect your water pipes up to that sprinkler for automatic watering. Believe it or not, this is fully functional and looks a bit nicer than cluttering around other parts of the ship. 
on either side of this little animal area, add one of your three antenna, and the last one goes all the way up front by the pole. On the raised platform at the back of the cabin, place your windmill for optimal battery charging, and then inside, your receiver can go on one side of the lower area, and your steering wheel and engine controls can go on either side of the upper area. That makes the boat fully functional and looking pretty good, but if you want to take it one step further, you can set up some rigging. On the very front of the raft, add a cheap wood window, then a horizontal pillar going out towards the front of the bow. On the end of that pillar, you can place a zipline to act as your front rigging anchor. Then place one more on either side of the front pole, and one more zipline all the way on top of that pole. You can then connect the top to each of the three ziplines at the bottom. At the back, add another zipline on top of each of the back towers. These can then be connected to the front zipline. On the back of these pillars, place three ziplines evenly spaced until about halfway down the first pillar from the top. Next, you'll need six more ziplines on either side of the horizontal pillars, staggered on either side until they meet up at the very end. The three at the back of the tall pillar connect as support structures to the three on the back side of the horizontal pillars, and the other three will connect down to our nets. This is why we didn't remove the scaffolding earlier, as you can place these standing zip lines so that they are as close to the front corner of each section of the little net. When the scaffold is destroyed, the zip lines will then be supported by the nets, so make sure these are fortified. And then these three zip lines on the nets can be connected to the horizontal pillars by the cabin. If you didn't know, you can also change the slack of the zipline by scrolling up or down with the mouse wheel to make it look more or less taut as you prefer. Finally, with everything in place, add a coat of paint in your favorite colors. I chose a classic fishing palette, but you can make it as colorful as you choose. If you want to be extra bougie, you can also hang your rhino shark trophy from the front horizontal pillar to show off your biggest catch. That all leaves us with a fully functional, aesthetic, and pretty seamless fishing trawler that will finally collect all of the trash that comes your way. Thank you all for challenging me to build something like this. I never would have thought of it on my own. And thank you to Southern New Hampshire University for sponsoring this episode. If there are any other raft designs you'd like to see me build, be sure to leave them in the comments. But I think that's everything for me for now. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out. I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day.